Hello everyone, I'm Zhen Jing Huang from NYU. Today I'm going to talk about Spartan, a distributed array programming framework which you can automatically choose the right partition for array to minimize network communication. Everyone has heard about big data and its related applications such as machine learning, scientific computing, and computational finance. Programmers in this area tend to use array library to speed up their development. So we believe it is important to have a practical distributed array framework. Why are array programs so special and loved by these communities? This is because array library gives programmer a, a high level array oriented abstraction. Let's look at an example. This NumPy function implements a uh, forward propagation, a core component of neural network. This function first take a data array, A1, as input, and then compute the output for the next layer by multiplying A1 with the weight W1. The activation function here is sigmoid. The output for the third layer is also computed by a matrix multiplication. So this function demonstrates two important characteristics of array programs. The first one is that each variable represents an array. Information such as data type, uh, size, and the dimension are captured by the abstract data structures. Second, programmer can directly use this array to do computation. This is very important because it allows programmer to focus on the logic of algorithms instead of the tedious detail of each computation. Unfortunately, so far there is no good way to distribute array programs on multiple machines. For example, programmer can convert these NumPy programs into MapReduce family, such as Hadoop and Spark. However, MapReduce family's primitives are designed for general key value collection, not suitable for array programs. Another choice is to use some existing distributed array frameworks. Although this seems promising, uh, this array framework usually requires user or programmer to do manual tidying for good performance. So what is tiling? Tiling is a way to partition a distributed array. Let's look at a, a very simple expression, C equals to A plus B, with only two dimensional arrays. Since these arrays are large, so we need to distribute them to multiple machines. Suppose there are two workers in our example. So each array is divided into two tiles and distributed to both machines. Then each machine can directly do the computation without any network communication. However, if one of these arrays is divided in a different way, then what happened? In this case, B is divided along column. After distributed them to both machines, we can find that both the machines cannot do the computation locally. Instead, each machine needed to transmit a portion of B to another machine to get appropriate data for computation. This requires additional network transmission and thus slow down the performance. So it's very important to choose correct tiling for arrays. It seems easy to do manual tiling for the previous example. It's just a very simple expression. However, an application can consist of many expressions. So the total number of possible tiling is huge. Moreover, an application usually uses many different APIs. So in order to do manual tiling, Programmer needed to understand what is good tiling for each API. Finally, our example only uses two dimensional arrays, but many applications need an n-dimensional array, which have many way to tiles. So we believe manual tiling is painful and should be avoided. Our goal is to let Spartan to defeat manual tiling. So to do automatic tiling, there are, several, there, are, there are several challenges. 
The first one is that Spartan needed to look at multiple expression at a time. Let's consider these, these two expressions. Suppose D is generated by another expression and it's already the tile along column. So how do we tile all other arrays? If we only look at the first expression, then tiling row is a good choice. Tiling all array along row is a good choice. But when we look at the second expression, we will find that D needs to be repartitioned or retiled in order to do the computation. So this requires a uh, network transmission. But uh, if Spartan can look at all expression at the same time, then it is obvious that tiling all array in this example along color is the good choice. In order to see multiple expression at the same time, Spartan lazily evaluate the program and build a dependency graph. For this example, instead of evaluating C equals to A plus B or other expression immediately, Spartan postpone the evaluation to build the expression graph. Spartan will evaluate all expression after it finishes the optimization. The second challenge is that Spartan needed to understand the array access pattern of each expression. For, however, there could be a lot of functions and APIs. For example, NumPy supports hundreds of APIs. This figure only shows a very small portion of them. But even for this small portion API, it is difficult for Spartan to embed the array access pattern for each API. To capture array access pattern, we propose a set of high-level operators. All array expression, programs, and functions are implemented by these high-level operators. Therefore, Spartan only needed to understand the array access pattern of these high-level operators. Unlike traditional data flow primitives, the key and the value of this high-level operator are restricted to array information. As a result, each operator exposes a fixed array access pattern. Spartan provides several high-level operators. I'm going to talk about, I'm going to discuss two of them. The first one is map. In map reduce, the map takes the input data and generates a set of key and a value collection. There is no restriction of the input data. On the other hand, Spartan's map requires the input array to be the same shape. Then Spartan's map groups the tiles of each array by the shape and the position and applies the user-defined function to these groups. Let's look at an example. This example implements, again, a very simple expression, addition. And the map, suppose there are two workers in our example. Then map, first group A1 and B1 together. Because they have the same shape and the position. And the map then applies the user-defined function, here is addition, to this group. To, generate, to calculate the result, C1. C1 also has the same shape and the position as A1 and B1. Map then generate another group, A2 and B2, and the calculate the result, C2. Although I present these two groups sequentially, they are executed by different tasks, and uh, so they are executed parallel. Another high-level operator is join, map, join update. Join update is a powerful operator. It can join tiles by different axes and uh, update tile with arbitrary shape and position. So this high-level high level operator is flexible and can be used to implement many complicated operations, such as matrix multiplication. Join update takes two arrays as input and the tiles, the ti sorry, and a group, and a group the tile of each, each array by their shape and the position of the join axis. Again, let's look at another example. 
This example is used to implement matrix multiplication. Again, suppose there are two workers here. Join up their first group A1 and B1 together. They are grouped together because the column size and the position of A1 are the same as the row size and the position of B1. Then join up there, apply the user defined function here to calculate the result, data result U1. Note that in, inside this user defined function, there is an update API. This update API is used to tell join up there where to, uh, where to update, the, where to write this result matrix U1. And then join up there, generate another group, and again calculate the result and the write the result. Join update allowed user defined function to update to arbitrary shape and the position. So it requires an accumulation function to resolve right right conflict. In this example, U1 are, and the U2 are actually overlapped. And the accumulation function here is addition. So the next step is join update add at least two array, U1 and U2 together, to get the final result, C. So I have presented two high-level operators. Spartans, all of Spartans high-level operators constitute the all built-in library function and the programs. For this example, the left figure is the dependency graph of the expressions. The figure in the right side is the, is the actual expression graph captured by Spartan. For example, the addition expression of C and E are captured as map operators. And the matrix multiplication of D is captured as join update. Therefore, Spartan's expression shows the dependency of the high-level operators. Now we have an expression graph constituted by the high-level operators to solve the previous two challenges. But how do we tile arrays according to this expression? This, sorry, this expression graph. We observe that each high-level operator exposes a fixed, exposes a fixed tiling cost profile. So to tile arrays, Spartan transformed the expression graph into another graph which explicit captured tiling communication cost. We refer this new graph as tiling graph. A tiling graph is transformed from an expression graph by transforming each high-level each high level operator into a tiling group. Each tiling group represents all possible tiling of the corresponding operators. For simplicity, I only show two possible tiling here, but there could be a lot of possible tiling. In a tiling graph, each edge, each edge means, that means the communication cost when the two operators are tiled according to the connected tiling node. For example, this edge means that A and C are tiled along column, and the cost is zero. This edge means that B is tiled along column, but C is tiled along row, and the cost is the size of B. We know the cost for these two edges because the non tiling cost profile of map operator. The next step is to connect each tiling group with its input node. So C is connected with O, A, and B's tiling nodes. So there are totally A H in this graph. That means there are A choices. Uh, sorry, there are four choices, but each one is for A and B. In this graph, we only show the tiling graph of map. For other Spartan's high-level operator, they have their own unique graph and the edge codes. In a tiling graph, each operator has several possible tiling nodes but only one can be chosen to represent the tiling for the operator. 
So our original goal, searching the best tiling for the expression graph, now is turned into finding the tiling node for each operator, for each tiling group, which minimize the overall communication cost in a tiling graph. A naive, a naive algorithm is to enumerate all possible choice. For example, this is one choice. The cost is the size of D. And this is another choice. This choice uh, selects all tiling as row base. The cost is zero. Unfortunately, the number of possible tiling is exponential to the, num the number of operators. So Spartan adopts a greedy approach to search the best tiling. We observe that if an operator used or is used by more other operators, then it has more chance to affect the overall tiling cost. So the greedy heuristic adopted by Spartan is to search the, the tiling group with the maximum edge connectivity first and choose the tiling for this, uh, this node. For example, in this subgraph, C has the maximum edge connectivity. So Spartan will deal with this node first. Because of time limit, I'm not going to expand the flow of our algorithm. Our paper discusses the detail of each step. In summary, Spartan's, Spartan's program and the built-in are constituted by Spartan's high-level operator. So given a program, Spartan can turn it into an expression graph, which each node is a high-level operator. Spartan then applies the tiling algorithm to find the best, the best tiling choice. All of this from Spartan's front end. Spartan's back end is made up of a master machine and a several worker machines. The scheduler on the master machine then schedule distributed tasks. Workers then execute this distributed task and create distributed arrays. In our implementation, we found that Spartan's high-level operators are expressive. Based on these high-level operators, we have built more than 70 NumPy APIs and 12 applications in different areas. We are still implementing more API and application for Spartan. Our, evalu our evaluation shows that Spartan is scalable. This figure shows the execution time speed up for all applications for 256 workers. The baseline here is the execution time of A workers. The X axis represent different applications. We can see that many applications achieve good scalability. Spartan is also fast compared to the existing distributed programming framework. This evaluation is run on 256 workers. The goal of this evaluation is to show that the high-level operator design can still achieve good performance. Note that some comparison here is like apple to oranges. For example, Spartan is actually an in-memory programming model, but uh, side, like a CIDB, it, it stores the data in the external storage. So this comparison may be not very fair. In order to show the performance effect of bad tidings, we randomly choose tidings which are not the best tidings and compare with the tidings chosen by Spartan. In this figure, the y-axis is the normalized execution time. The baseline is the execution time of Spartan's tidings. We can see that most applications are at least twice slower if the tidings is not the best tidings. So it is important to choose correct tiling for applications. There is a lot of related work in this area. Many distributed array library and the framework have been proposed to help a programmer to do array programs. However, this library and the framework usually require user to do manual tiling for good performance. HPC community also propose compiler technique to analyze program and uh, derive good partition for 
arrays. However, comparative techniques cannot always precisely analyze all arbitrary programs, and it is not easy to use in different languages. In this talk, I present Spartan, a distributed array framework with automatic tiling. Spartan's high-level operator explicitly exposed array access pattern and have non-tiling cost profile. Combined with expression graph, Spartan can achieve automatic tiling. Thank you. I see you quote Hudak, so I presume you are aware of um, statically typed languages as well. Could you speak to the benefits of using statically typed versus dynamically typed language for your problem? Well, um, I'm not a master of compiler techniques, but why we choose Python? Because uh, many, uh, many programmers nowadays, when they develop uh, machine learning or maybe computational finance programs on a single machine, they tend to use some high-level language such as NumPy or R. So there are many works focused on this uh, dynamic language. So for, uh, we be not believe we think for compiler, analyzing this dynamic language is somehow more complicated and not very accurate. So that's why we think if we can use this high-level operator to capture this array as pattern, it will be easier to, to do some optimization. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Uh, sorry? Yeah. No, actually, we for each high-level operator, it is executed parallelly. That graph is actually the tiling cost. It's not about the execution flow. Yeah. Okay, let's take it. Go ahead. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I have one question. Have you compared your pro machine learning performance to parameter server uh, systems? Actually, that's a good question. Uh, if we are going to implement, we actually implement some neural network programs on Spartan. But uh, currently, we haven't uh, actually compared this performance with uh, parameter servers. Yeah, because this is the uh, work we are currently focused on. Yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you.